range of technical and decision making processes as well as promoting uh, some of the products and services that AM offer as a reseller um, but also as a solutions provider. Um, so today's session represents the first in a series of short format information sessions uh, focused on demonstrating how geospatial contents and technology are being used by AAM, uh, but also our clients in the industry more broadly uh, as a means of solving a range of complex problems that can help to lead to efficient, accurate and profitable business outcomes. Um, we're going to do our absolute best to uh, keep the session to uh, approximately 20 minutes, um, just long enough for you to enjoy a cup of coffee or tea. Um, but please feel free uh, to submit any questions you have in relation to any of the content pre presented and uh, we'll aim to respond to you directly following the event. So the first project we'll cover um, involved the acquisition of high resolution multispectral stereo pairs, um, dem and contour extraction for two areas of interest located in Asia. Uh, to support management of existing mine operations and exploration within the region. Um, for this project, the client faced a number of regional and location-based challenges that threatened to impede or pre uh, prevent a, a range of project-critical activities from progressing forward. Um, the project site's remoteness and distance from one another also meant access by contractors, project staff and other key stakeholders was difficult and without the availability of current and reliable environmental records um, it was incredibly difficult to uh, for the client to understand the condition, composition and structure of the landscape um, they were working in. Um, in addition to these challenges, um, the onset of an annual monsoon uh, weather event was fast approaching also. Um, the, the client advised that access to imagery ahead of this weather event was um, absolutely critical to uh, meeting key project milestones um, if they would commence on time and uh, of course the data acquisition was uh, required to coincide with ground survey activities as well. Uh, so in order to meet the client's technical requirements and address uh, some of the constraints that I've uh, just explained, um, AM recognised that a satellite approach for the project was um, really essential in this case. Um, AM requested uh, for GeoWise Collection Planning Team uh, to, to start um, at, at the beginning of the process to undertake a collection feasibility assessment, estimating as accurately as possible the period of time required to complete capture, um, which draws from current and historic weather data, as well as assessing the uh, client's um, order requirements and, and order parameters. Uh, the collection period estimated aligned well with the project milestones and the process moved fairly swiftly from, from that point. Uh, the acquisition was programmed and following a number of attempts made during that collection period, um, successful acquisition of stereo imagery for each location was achieved, um, meeting the agreed specification and, and also conforming with uh, GOI's um, minimum quality standards. The imagery was then available for download by AM uh, via FTP within just three days from capture, um, which kept the project on track for on-time delivery and the next phase of the project um, could then commence. So the first step um, at AM's end was the uh, production phase, which involved reviewing uh, the position, distribution, accuracy of survey accurate ground control um, supplied by the client. Um, for each image using high-end photogrammetry software. Uh, once this process was complete, AM also rectified the imagery um, to, to achieve an, a relative accuracy of plus or minus one meter in both the horizontal and vertical planes um, and extracted a digital elevation model with five meter postings and two meter in full uh, contours. Uh, so the ability by AM to to coordinate acquisition of stereo satellite imagery um, enabled the client to fulfill a number of objectives, um, including the use of imagery as an environmental baseline to assist with assessing the current condition and health of vegetation, um, measuring vegetation disturbance from mining activities, um, and undertaking an environmental impact assessment to ensure compliance with government regulations. 
Um, in addition, uh, the use of terrain data and satellite imagery allowed the client to analyze and, and map the region's surface geology and land use to assist with identifying exploration targets, um, assist with asset management, development, and planning activities, among other applications. Um, so for this project, use of a space-borne remote sensing system um, provided really the ideal means of acquiring reliable, quantitative, and accurate information um, to support a, a range of mining and engineering related functions. Um, this is a fairly common scenario, I guess, this, this project um, for, for the resource industry um, more broadly, um, where information was needed for a difficult to access or um, remote location. Um, and I guess, uh, in, in summary, um, you know, you can certainly be confident that AM can develop a, a solution for your project that gets you what you need in a timely and cost-effective uh, fashion. So we'll move on to the, um, the next uh, case study. Um, so, so for this example, um, uh, Rob Clout will uh, demonstrate how satellite imagery and, and, and a, a range of other data sources can be integrated into a web-enabled mapping environment to consolidate your project data um, and information, uh, resolve data management issues, uh, permit access to a wide number of users, improving delivery and consumption of geospatial content. Over to you, Rob. Many thanks, Ken. Um, hope everybody can hear me okay. Um, so what we're going to talk about in, in this scenario is a fairly common uh, problem that we come across with a lot of our customers where they, they have an area, um, in this case this is Port Headland, and the customer, one of the most important things that, that we, we come across uh, across our, our organization and across our customers is fast delivery of data. Cutting down the amount of time it takes to, to, to get the data and the spatial information in your hands um, and into the hands of people that need it. Uh, in this case, this is a customer uh, that has varying imagery needs. Uh, there, there are a number of different users, um, enviros, um, engineers, um, many different types of people that, that need, have different needs for their imagery. And the customer wants to be able to work with an organization that can be flexible about what products they can supply. The customer also doesn't have a vast IT infrastructure. They don't have um, in, enough resources staff-wise, and they want to be able to work with an organization that can supply them a total solution. So in this case, uh, the scenario that we, 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 we've come up with for this customer is actually utilizing um, the AM Content Cloud. Now, we're still working on the name of, of, of this concept, um, but what this, what this gives us is the flexibility to fit a solution into um, each individual customer's specific needs. In this case, uh, they don't have a large amount of software. Uh, they certainly don't want to buy a lot of software. And they want to keep their software costs to a minimum. Therefore, they, they came to AAM to be able to um, supply satellite data, but we also customize the solution to, to really fit their particular scenario. Um, so reduce their software costs through provision of a hosted web mapping solution. Uh, reduce their infrastructure costs uh, where we, we supply the data. And we still supply the data physically, and they get the data on their site. Um, but we also then serve that data uh, directly to them from, from our, our AM servers. Um, that enables them to be able to uh, fit that, that imagery serving into their existing solutions and fit seamlessly into their existing workflows. This enables them to develop faster, more efficient data management and handling processes. Uh, AM is the organization. Um, they always know that they can come to, to their, their, their hosted website. They're always going to have the most accurate data. They're, they're always going to be able to find that data quickly, um, and they're always going to be able to use that data quickly and simply. We can also then integrate that with, with 3D solutions, Web 3D, um, our K2VI, uh, virtual mine site, virtual plant site, um, to be able to give them, them extended needs to, to what they want as well. Um, this is just a very, very quick screenshot. Um, access all the various epochs, um, so not just the most recent data, but all the data that they've had previously. Integrate with their terrain data, integrate with their vector data. Um, add annotation, so enabling them to do some very quick redlining, 
um, share that data and that share, share those maps between colleagues, um, do some simple printing, integrate their own existing uh, print templates, and through that hosted solution just be able to take that data um, and print maps uh, within their templates very quickly and simply. Um, just an example of you know, some of those printed maps in PDF. Um, and I thought we'd, we'd, we'd kind of show you um, some of that capability. So what we're seeing here, and I'll just maximize that screen. Uh, what we're seeing here is this is actually, I'm, I'm up here in sunny Brisbane, and we're accessing our, our server um, down in Sydney. And this is, again, the customers come to us, um, and we've supplied them with some satellite data. Now, in this case, this is um, some rapid eye data. Um, now, rapid eye data, I'll actually refer to Ken um, to, to just um, explain the benefits of rapid eye data. Ken? Sure. So the uh, rapid eye constellation comprises of uh, five identical satellites, um, each of which are equipped with a large swath capability and enable high visit, re uh, high revisit frequencies, which make it ideal for broad scale mapping where tight time constraints come into play. Um, each sensor um, acquires data in a five band multispectral format and is typically delivered in an author rectified um, processing level at five meter pixel resolution. And the spectral profile of the data uh, makes it suitable uh, for vegetation health um, and condition classification for envi environmental uh, management practices. And what you're seeing here is the, the, these um, images are being served to you by OGC Web Services. Um, you can see the performance is very good. Um, but in this case, as is in, uh, quite common, um, they decided that the rapid eye was great. Um, but what they, they, they've now done is they've focused on a few project areas where they actually decided they needed some high resolution imagery. Um, so they came to us and wanted some high resolution satellite data. Um, in this case, this is uh, 50 centimeter GUI. Um, it could have been 50 centimeter digital globe world view data. Um, again, Ken, uh, the benefits of, of high resolution satellite data. Okay, so um, yeah, in this case, I guess both GOI and digital globe operate um, a constellation of optical stereoscopic uh, multispectral satellites that can acquire imagery with um, products ranging um, from 50 centimeter to 4 meter in resolution. Um, the data can be supplied in a four band multispectral. Uh, format um, and in the case of Worldview 2, um, eight multispectral bands, which um, of course uh, enable us to deliver a, a, a very rich information source um, suitable for a wide range of applications. Um, and each of these sensors are actively used at exploration pre feasibility stages. However, um, can certainly provide benefits throughout each stage of the mining um, or engineering project lifecycle. So again, um, you know, as is often the case, you know, this is a great scenario where, where they can integrate different data types. Um, so the original 5 meter, uh, the 50 centimeter, um, and again, as, as is quite common, they then focus on a few project areas where maybe they decide that they, they actually want to get even higher resolution. And one of the benefits of obviously working closely with AAM um, and working together with the customer is there will be times when we can also supply them high resolution um, aerial photography. Um, so again, in this case, you're just seeing again the, the, the three different data types for three particular needs, um, being able to be seamlessly um, provided to the user um, through this hosted solution. So again, there, there's been no infrastructure costs, there's been no software costs for the user, um, a very simple way to be able to consume the different data types. Um, and again, um, what we can then integrate is we can integrate certain other workflows um, so in this case, we can um, integrate with other software packages, so maybe Google Maps, Bing Maps. Um, maybe you want to integrate with Google Street View. Um, not sure that's too useful up in Port Hedland um, or in the mines, but we can integrate with whatever, whatever software that you've got. Um, again, very simple to be able to add your own print templates. So utilize this website and be able to just go off and uh, create your, your very simple printing, add some annotation. Um, do some simple measurements, um, or we can we can actually integrate some some quite complex workflows. Um, but what what is also nice is being able to seamlessly integrate these same services. Where for some of your users, this website is perfectly good enough, but there will be some power users 
and chances are you're going to have a few power users that have got a, a, a GIS software available to them. That could be MapInfo, that could be uh, Vulkan, it could be um, some open source software, but um, in this case we're utilizing ArcGIS Desktop. And we, all, we want to be able to offer that same data um, and that single point of truth to the people that are using the, the lightweight um, web client, but also the same services integrated within your GIS software of choice. So in this case, you can see we're, we're accessing that, that, those same image services. Um, again, um, our services, but also integrated with what other services you've got available to you. Um, and you can see again, um, this can all be supplied to you via secure login. So you will just get access to, to what your particular login um, it has security access to. We're just zooming here again. This is the rapid eye data. And again, you can see the speed and performance coming from Sydney um, is very good within your GIS suite. So you, you can have that confidence that you're accessing your data uh, with no time delays. Um, and again, different band combinations. You can see how quickly this, this gives you the capabilities you need. Zooming in, uh, again, uh, you can see that speed and performance. And again, one of the things that we'll see is we can also integrate um, new data so in this case, we're accessing, uh, we've been to the, the, the GOI, GeoFuse uh, website and done a quick search to see whether there's actually up to more up-to-date data or maybe even archived data. And in this case, we've now found that data and again, we're delivering that data via the, 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 the GOI web services, uh, seamlessly integrated with, within um, this website and, uh, sorry, within this, this GIS suite. And we can obviously look at the two different data types and look at the the changes over time. So obviously in this case we could see that this was from uh, 2011 and the other, so I think it's uh, November 2011 and the other one was June 2011. So we can do some very simple um, change detection. Um, this other use case that we're looking at, this is actually down in Hunter. Um, obviously an area where AM have done a large amount of work over time and in this case the user has a mine up in the Hunter. They have a storage area and a port access uh, down in Newcastle and they, they have come to us previously. Um, you can see the, the, the wide amount of data that they've um, got available to them and in this case uh, we're going to zoom into their mine um, and you can see the, the, the large area that we've got obviously over the Hunter and we can just go and have a look at one of the mines and they want to be able to do some work between this area here and the, the link between this area and the port down in Newcastle. And in this scenario, uh, the, the, the person that's dealing with us has just had his boss come to him and say, hey, um, Mr. GIS user, um, we want to have a planning meeting and we want to have a planning meeting tomorrow. I want to be able to do some simple planning. Can you show me what data you've got available? Um, we've already supplied them some very high resolution um, this is some 10 centimeter imagery over a over their storage stockpiles, and for this particular use case, um, 10 centimeter for this particular area was perfect for them. But they their budget only extended to 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 their small project area. So this user has come to us and said, "Hey, um, I, I need your help, Mr. AM. I I've got the 10 centimeter over this area that you supplied to me, and you know it's excellent. It's, it's really nice imagery, but my boss." has actually asked us to, to, to actually do some planning um, in this railway sidings along here and also the rail link between here and the mine. Is there anything you can do to us? Thankfully, we're a really good relationship with the guys at Digital Globe um, where they have enabled us to be able to access uh, their, their archive data via their web mapping service and we can now supply that data and we can supply the link to that um, and you can see now um, just at a flick of a switch we're accessing the Digital Globe web mapping service to be able to integrate that with their existing data and integrate that to be able to show their entire planning area. Um, so despite that guy coming to us at the last minute, we can supply that to him with no time delays and allowing him to go to his boss uh, to do detailed planning uh, for their data. Once, once they have a bit more time and they've decided what it is exactly they want, um, we can now go and identify what is the most recent data and this is the, the Digital Globe Archive and we can just uh, very simply be able to utilize that. Um, this is either something that you can do yourself or you can 
we can do within IAM. And very quickly, we can just find out what's the most recent data available for that area. Um, so in this case, you can see the dates that these are available. You can see all the metadata um, for what's the most recent data. Um, so you can either utilize that archive data or you can um, decide that you want new capture, uh, depending on the particular scenario. And we can just then access the, the feature ID of that particular scene, supply that to, to, to Ken, um, and Ken can then source that data and you can get that data uh, supplied to you with no time delay. So hopefully you can see um, this is a, a nice scenario where um, you can integrate different data sources with, with no time delay um, and give you a very efficient um, data management solution. So that, those are just uh, three different examples where we had remote access, uh, terrain generation, um, utilizing different data types for the same area, uh, 3D type capture, um, but also then being able to integrate um, high resolution imagery with satellite data where occasionally you will get that case where um, my budget allows me to, to do high resolution imagery over a small budget area, but I don't need 10 centimeter for the entire budget area. Um, so by you working closely with AAM, we, we can give you that blended solution where we can give you the satellite data at 50 centimeter, um, which is perfectly good enough for, for the larger project area, but also integrated with the other capabilities we have within the team um, to be able to give you the high resolution data as well. Um, obviously then up at the mines, we can also um, work closely with you to, to do um, the, the mine surveys, to do the LIDAR data, uh, to do the mapping, and enabling you to just have that one-stop shop to be able to get that solution for what you need. Um, Ken? Yeah, look, thank, thanks, Rob, um, and, and thank you all very much for um, uh, taking time out of your data to join us. Um, certainly hope that you found the content uh, informative and perhaps can see some uh, opportunities uh, where, where AM might be able to support um, you know, developing a solution for your project. Um, as mentioned, uh, we'll aim to respond to um, all questions received as soon as possible. Um, however, please do feel free to uh, contact us via um, our info at amgroup.com email address um, or via our website. Um, and uh, like again, a, a big thank you again. A big thank you to Digital Globe and to GOI um, and also to RapidEye. Um, I'm sure the guys are listening, so so really appreciate all the stuff that you've done for us. Um, and it's a pleasure working with you guys. Excellent. Um, and uh, you yeah, certainly would welcome any uh, suggestions for topics that um, you might like AAM to cover in future. Um, on behalf of the AAM team, uh, Rob and myself, thanks very much for dialing in um, and we hope to speak to you very soon.